tomorrow is the first anniversary of Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine. One year on, after tens of thousands of lives lost, strong Ukrainian resistance and the U.S.-led coalition funneling billions in aid to Ukraine, where does the war stand? Wendy Sherman is the Deputy Secretary of State, and she joins me now. Deputy Secretary, thank you for joining us. As you well know, one of the chief criticisms of the U.S. and Western response to the war in Ukraine has been too little, too late, that they resisted sending things like stingers and high Mars, even tanks, out of fear of escalation, only to provide them later on anyway. We know President Zelensky is now requesting these long-range missiles, the ATACMS system. Every expert we've spoken to says this would let him hit further away Russian targets, keeping Ukrainians safer. Why, why is the Biden administration holding this request up? I think, um, Amna, it's great to be with you this afternoon and talk with you and talk with your viewers. Uh, President Biden, at every step along the way, has listened very closely to what President Zelensky has asked for. And no doubt if I was President Zelensky, I would ask for everything I could possibly think of because uh, this is very existential for Ukraine. These are very tough decisions. Uh, we look at our own uh, readiness. We look at our own stockpiles. Uh, but we look uh, at what the battlefield is and what we can provide. And yes, at every point along the way, one has to think about escalation, uh, not taking us to a place I don't think Ukraine or anybody else wants to be. Um, I think the president has made incredibly wise and steady decisions. Um, I think his trip to Kyiv, his speech in Poland made it clear that the American people and the world, for that matter, 141 uh, countries uh, stood with Ukraine this afternoon. But on, on this Nations point, if I may, on the, the sphere of escalation that has been there from the beginning and all of these weapon systems were provided anyway. So what is the what's the Russian response you're trying to avoid at this point? They've already bombed civilian targets and hospitals and so on. Uh, without a doubt, um, when uh, Vladimir Putin wasn't winning and isn't winning on the battlefield, he's decided to try to freeze people to death, to abduct children and take them to Russia and try to, quote unquote, re-educate them as Russians. Horrifying acts that I think everybody listening just is astounded uh, that this would happen in this day and age. So many echoes of history that are profoundly horrible. Um, but let me be clear that um, the United States has provided billions of dollars in security assistance uh, to Ukraine. Uh, we want to ensure uh, that uh, Vladimir Putin is um, held back from taking the most horrible steps that he could take, even beyond the horrible steps he's already taken. When you but say the, the most, most horrible, are you talking here? about a tactical nuclear weapon? Is that the worst case scenario you're trying to avoid? Well, it's not the worst case scenario, but the worst case scenario would also be invading other countries as well, believing that they belong to some fantasy of what a Russian empire should look like under Vladimir Putin. But certainly, uh, we don't want, the world does not want Vladimir Putin to use what is considered to be a tactical nuclear weapon. In my own view, having dealt uh, with the issue of nuclear weapons over many years, mm -hmm. um, every single kind of nuclear weapon, even if it is quote unquote low threshold, is uh, a very, very great risk uh, to the world's security. I'd like to ask you about the recent warnings to China against providing lethal aid to Russia that we've heard from U.S. officials. What, what does that mean? What, in your view, constitutes lethal aid that China is considering providing? Well, we are very concerned that lethal aid means direct assistance to provide weapons uh, to uh, Russia. And the uh, administration has told uh, the People's Republic of China directly that if, in fact, they do provide lethal aid to Russia, uh, that there will be consequences. And uh, the PRC understands what that means. And, and would that be, would China's that, provision see, of lethal aid, would that be an escalation that warrants a, a stronger U.S. response? I think it certainly will get a U.S. response if they provide such lethal aid. And Vladimir Putin has been an aggressor nation. Uh, Ukraine has been the victim here. Uh, and the PRC should be standing with Ukraine, which is trying to uphold the principles of the U.N. Charter 
that Xi Jinping says is so important to him. Deputy Secretary, I want to ask you about where we are as a nation because we have some new poll numbers from PBS NewsHour and PR Maris poll that shows nearly a third of Americans think we are providing too much support to Ukraine. And of course, there's a big partisan divide. That's a stronger sentiment among Republicans, 47 percent of whom think it, it is too much. Does declining public support here at home make it harder to continue to fund Ukraine? Well, you are talking about a third of Americans who have said they think perhaps we're giving too much. But that means two thirds of Americans believe that we should stand with Ukraine. Uh, that's more than a simple majority. So I think that's a very profound statement about the tremendous solidarity uh, with Ukraine in this. Look, everybody wants this to be over, uh, no more so than the Ukrainian people. Uh, who are being uh, frozen out of their homes, uh, don't have electricity, um, civilians being killed um, by Iranian drones that have been given uh, or sold to Russia. While I have you, Deputy Secretary, I want to ask you about Iran, because the International Atomic Energy Agency has said they've detected Iran has enriched uranium to 84 percent purity. That is weapons grade. What is the threshold for the U.S. to act, to place new sanctions or to take any other kind of action? Well, I haven't seen the final assessment by the International Atomic Energy Agency. Uh, and I'll look forward to seeing the details of the assessment that I know they're currently making uh, and what the basis of it is. Uh, and then I'm sure uh, that we will have consultations uh, with uh, Europe and with others uh, before deciding how to proceed. Uh, if indeed they have enriched as a matter of um, policy uh, to 84 percent, that is extremely concerning. And would that trigger some kind of U.S. action, additional sanctions or something else? Uh, indeed, uh, we would have to decide what that means and what consequences are appropriate. That is Deputy Secretary of State Wendy Sherman joining us tonight. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Take care.